Suffle upon questions. 1. What inspired you to create a world centered on a Sicilian slash Silophyte? Octopus for a man that didn't fit into society. It was all really just an experiment. I had originally simply wished to try my hand at creating character designs based on mythological and folklorist concepts that was fond of. Mainly Sicilian Cyclops. Made it up as I went and the world of story created itself over time. What were the main inspirations behind Tanji's design? Oh wait. Two. What were the main inspirations behind Tanji's design? Tanji's design inspiration stems mainly from a couple sources of meat slum. The first being a video of our party of marine biologists using their submarine to inspect a specimen of a species of Dumbo octopus known as a flapjack octopus. Apistotuthis californiana. This particular species also fits in the fa into the family of umbrella octopi. The octopus looked to be quite cute in my eyes, and is what inspired me to look into the concept of octopod mermaid in the first place. The octopus in the video appeared to have a tangerine coloration. I felt this was a unique obscure color, so I incorporated it into Tanju's design. Note that, 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 note that she isn't made to resemble any specific species of octopi. She's just a generic humanoid octopus. The second source of inspiration that originates from a deleted scene in the movie The Little Mermaid 2 Return to the Sea. In this scene, Morgana, the neglected sister of the evil sea witch, Ursula, has a flashback revealing what the two had looked like when they were children. I fell in love with Morgana's linky design. I felt it was a perfect build for an awkward, misfit, odd mole character and fell outcast and misunderstood. The rest of Tandy's design is pretty much inspired by my own imagination. 3. Why didn't you give Tanji any eyelashes? Tanji's lack of eyelashes portrays her different from the ideal stereotypical female. She doesn't care to look glamorous, pretty, or dainty. In her intuitive mind, these are aspects. These aspects are rather frivolous. I wanted her to be a clear staple to the notion that it's okay to be a female who cares not to follow the trends of the wall. And that while it's okay to have it, hope or beauty, inward beauty is of much more importance. I was especially inspired after remembering talk on a radio, stating that some young girls had worried about their appearance after comparing themselves to pop culture icons. It's clear she's female based on her hair and chest design and made sure of them. Would 4. Would you say that Tanji is considered a tomboy? In the technical sense, yes, it's not black and white. The ideal image of a tomboy is a girl who is stick-skinned and somewhat brash, while taking a liking to rough and slash or exciting adventures, generally associated with the ideal image of the interest and behavior of a stereotypical male. While Tanji doesn't share the general interest of the typical female, she is still sensitive, gentle, and empathetic. At the same time, she doesn't mind doing physical labor if she has to. She may get easily distracted by her intuitive mind. But, if she summers some motivation, she'll put her tentacle down and follow through with whatever needs to get done. She's rather balanced, generally characteristic to buy enough chance. Hi, do you know of oh, any other female characters in media who don't have eyelashes? Well, I have seen some, they are generally obscure. Usually ambiguous background characters in old cartoons and comics and on the backs of cereal boxes. One notable instance is the Parvuff girls, however they are given eyeshadow, the substitute for their lack of eyelashes. There's also a version of Velma who has no eyelashes. Specifically, the f pup named Scooby-Doo at Incarnation. 6. Why did Tandy's mother abandon her? I intentionally left this mystery unanswered, as I felt it was more intriguing to leave it open to interpretation. In society sick in Cecilia, Tangeri remarks that her mother may have left her for a good reason. But it isn't necessarily true. We don't actually know if her parents were truly selfless. Yes, it grieved their mother to abandon her, but this aspect doesn't necessarily mean she cared for her well-being enough to put her before her own needs. Whether or not there is a possible excusable reason that could justify her actions is up to the opinion of each individual audience. 7. Did you hear Tanji the INFJ advocate slash advisor personality type? Being that all storytellers base their stories more or less on their own personal life experiences, yes. I am an INFJ, thus she too is essentially an INFJ. Logically, the main character of every story would share the personality of her grave.
Hey, did you always plan to incorporate Bible verses? Honestly, I did not originally plan to incorporate Bible verses. But I realized that any work that does not glorify God in some way has little to no merit. That's more a waste of time. Of course, it's fine to experience something that nearly tickles your imagination and wonder, but why not serve the Lord simultaneously? All you do, you do for God, and from my experience, the reward is so much greater. Satisfaction only comes from the Lord. 9. Why are you comfortable with incorporating rosy wolf snail when it's caught through the minds of with a snail species? Rosy wolf snail should not get the blame for the extermination of the Hawaiian snails. Better those who imported them. So lack of foresight is what's responsible. A wholesome wolf snail character is a way to help cope with this tragedy. Ralph was originally a character I created to go on various solo adventures in the tune of various covers of Duran Duran and Hungry Like the Wolf. The same goes for Rio with the various covers of, well, Rio. Though there seem to be many more Hungry Like the Wolf covers compared to Rio. Will I ever follow through with these adventures? Only time will tell. 10. When that's by the location choices for Cephalophon. I really just took inspiration from certain atmospheres and scenery that filled me with awe, wonder, and serenity. Everyone likes the sunset, be it over the mountains or over the water at the beach. And of course underwater loams are so often filled with such mesmerizing beauty and wonder. Everyone likes resting on bright green grassy hills under a bright blue cloudy sky. Sure everyone would find it intriguing to fly through the, those cumulonimbus clouds at any time in the day. Be it blue skies, gray skies, moonlit nights, sunset, or sunrise. Anyway, it would be filled with wonder. There's just something about that wholesome Halloween atmosphere in your voice like. It just feels so homey and charming. But unlike Christmas with this winter atmosphere and cozy feeling by the fireplace that everyone enjoys. You almost forgot to acknowledge the vibrant colors of autumn slash fall that put everyone at ease. 11. Is there any deeper meaning behind the look, the title name, Cephalopod, other than referring to Tangy's nature? While originally unintentional, over time I did come to realize that the title's meaning held greater significance than just Tangy herself. I had aimed to create something unique that hadn't entirely been done before. The odd and Cephalopod refers to various aspects of the world, from mythical preacher characters and unnatural settings, and interacting with other mythical beings, they are practically never paired together in me- That are practically never paired together in media. To unbog unusual remarks to breaking the fourth wall. It also would also refer to the fluctuating atmosphere in the world. The love and contents of the world are wholesome, with nothing mature whatsoever. That mimics and reflects the charming and wondrous atmospheres of imaginative children's books like Don't Give a Moose a Muffin and Georgia the Delves. The context, however, oftentimes has deep meaning and regards meaningful issues and aspects in real life. Because of this, it can at times potentially feel as though certain elements of the stories don't blend. Thus feeling odd. This might seem like an odd comparison, no pun intended, but it's a similar situation to the original Plaster and Zombies video game. Any coding error with the behavior of the zombies can be chalked up to the fact that zombies lack intelligence. Likewise, a cephalopod, anything that fills out a place, only pay tribute to the word odd in the title. Paul, did you find it complicating centering the story from a female perspective, being that you are male? Well, no. I centered Tandy's perspective from that of personal perspective, rather than gender stereotypes. Because female and male IFJs share the same values and are generally considered to be balanced, I wasn't too concerned with this matter. On top of this, no two people experience the exact same events that it contribute to shaping your unique soul. Thus, no two people share all the same quirks. Therefore, because I'm giving her my own unique quirks that have contributed to my unique behavior, she would be even more similar. It's likely that many of the interactions in the story do not go into enough, into enough detail to really differentiate male versus female behavior anyhow. Oh, and to clarify, by balance, I mean that INFJs are both emotional and logical.